Hi, and welcome to a very overdue GIMP tutorial. I think this is about a year overdue. Um, I've had more requests than I can possibly process <laughs> uh, as I went through my inbox, so um, I just took one at random really, because it was quick and easy and I'd be able to do it without much thinking. Um, today we're going to have a look at creating uh, a clone image. And there's a, a couple of ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you the, uh, the best way of doing it really uh, and give you a few tips about the photography for it as well. Now this image here, um, you can see uh, five versions of myself all um, having a quiet evening of poker. Um, this image was one I did quite, maybe about two years ago now, and um, I actually did it the wrong way. Um, and the only clue really that I did it the wrong way is the fact that this arm is bluer than the rest of the skin tone uh, in comparison to the others. So I'm just going to give you a quick tip on how to um, overcome that as well. Anyway, so I just thought I'd show you this because this was um, the image that sparked it all off for me personally. Um, but we're going to try something a bit simpler today. Okay, so today we're going to um, do something a little bit more simple. Um, when you've only got two clones, or one clone, and two people in the image, um, you'll find it's a lot quicker than to do it with uh, five as I did with the previous one. So we'll just do it with two to begin with, but the, the theory remains the same no matter how many you do it for. So this is going to be the end product that we aim for today. And you can see that the, the two images I've used for this are uh, this one and this one. Now, now when you have your photographs, you'll have them um, originally as two separate files and of course for us to work on them in the same image we need to make sure that they're just layers within the same image. So I'll quickly show you how to turn this into one image with two layers. You click on either one of your windows to make them active, it really doesn't matter which one at this stage. Uh, and you simply right click the picture area, go to edit and copy which is very straightforward. Then we go over to the other image window and we can right click, we go to edit and paste. And then you'll see as you paste over it, um, the previous image is laid over the top of the, the new image. And in your layers dialog, you'll see that you have two items here. We have the floating selection and the background. Now what we'll need to do is turn this floating selection into a new layer. So we right click that and simply press new layer and it automatically does that for us. Now with these eyeballs at the side of the layer, um, that actually makes each layer visible or invisible depending on whether the eyeball is switched on or off. So if I just toggle that you can see the difference um, between the two pictures. Another thing that might be quite useful as you're trying to attempt this kind of thing is to use your opacity slider above. Now what the opacity slider does is it makes the active layer um, more or less transparent. So when it's at 100% it's completely opaque which means it's not see-through and as we scroll that down you'll see that the image begins to change so you can have two ghostly images next to each other or we can just make it completely transparent and we only see the image underneath. So that can be quite helpful for, if you have it at 50%, um, it's quite helpful for seeing exactly where all the details are, particularly where there's overlap. So that can be quite good for editing later. Now I just want to quickly point out one more thing. Um, you'll notice as I toggle between these that there is a very slight change in the the light. So if we look at this white section of wall behind me, as I change that, it just goes from very light to just ever so slightly darker. Um, now that was uh, a silly mistake for me to make really, and I should have known better. It's actually the same reason why um, this arm is a different colour to the rest of the skin tones in the original image. Uh, the reason for this is um, when you're taking a picture with a regular point and shoot camera, um, the software built into the camera usually plays around with the white balance automatically. Now, most cameras have a manual override for that function, 
So whenever you're taking this picture, you need to make sure you do a couple of things. Firstly, you need to make sure that you use a tripod or you rest the camera on a, a stable surface. So in this instance, I just used a table. Um, that's important for the obvious reason that everything else in your picture has to stay exactly where it is. So if you have a, a tripod or a solid surface, then it's much easier to just cut one person out or paste one person in. But the second thing, and perhaps uh, one of the perhaps the second most important thing you can do, um, is also to make sure that your white balance setting in your camera is set to uh, manual, so it doesn't try to automatically adjust whenever the the quality of the light changes within the room. Okay, so once we've got our two layers pasted in together. There are two ways that we can go about making this into two versions of myself sitting next to each other. It's simply to use the eraser guys and then as we erase stuff you just see the the second figure come in. So that's very straightforward. Um, but this isn't actually the best way to do it because if you make a mistake with the eraser um, and you don't spot it until much later you've actually um, completely destroyed the picture information. Uh, the, the better way to do it, and it has a slightly scary name but it's not at all complicated once you understand it, is to use a layer mask. So to apply a layer mask we simply click on the, the top layer, the active layer that we want, and we'll know it's the active layer because it becomes blue. Uh, we right click that and as you scroll down about halfway down the menu you'll see add layer mask. So we add layer mask, now all of these do various things. Basically, if we just stick with white full opacity and then follow the instructions that I show, then you, this will be very easy to pick up. So we're going to set it to white full opacity, uh, leave it as it is, and go to add. And then you'll see in the layer box, we can actually click on the image itself and the layer mask. Now, we actually want to work on the layer mask, so you need to make sure that, that's, that you've clicked on that. Then what we also need to do is use our paintbrush tool and as we start to apply the black paint to the layer mask, everything behind that becomes visible. So it works the same way as an eraser. Um, the, the only benefit with this over a, well not the only benefit, but the main benefit with this over the eraser tool and the reason I would use the layer mask instead of the eraser tool is if I do make a mistake as we can see, it's only the layer mask that I'm changing. Um, the actual image itself behind the layer mask, um, the actual information on the layer mask hasn't been erased. It's still there. And that means if I were to change my uh, paintbrush to white, the opposite of black, and then paint over it again, um, we can undo that information. And as we see over here, it's the layer mask that's been edited and not the image in the background. So it actually remains much more faithful to the original image and you can uh, have a lot more freedom with mistakes and it's a lot more forgiving if you use a layer mask. So very simply all we need to do is with a, a black brush we just go around very quickly and we get rid of all of the um, areas that we need to delete. And just a few extra tips while you're doing this. Um, there's there's always going to be the problem of when you use a very hard brush of um, trying to edit the information. So it's usually wise at some point to use a, a brush with a, a slightly fuzzier edge. So in your brush editor you just um, toggle the hardness uh, and that, that just makes it a little bit more forgiving with some of the edits that you make. Um, and I think I went into some detail explaining um, the principles behind that on my uh, uh, eraser to transparent background, whatever it was. I for I've forgotten the title of it. It was two years ago I made the video. Um, but there's some tips about that on, on another video uh, if you do need them. Um, but that should be pretty straightforward. And uh, I hope you found this uh, useful and uh, entertaining. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, come online with a few more tutorials uh, in the future. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.